Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to draw this dessert using pastels and pastel pencils. And if you'd like a real-time version of this tutorial, you can find it up now in Critique Club. For $5 a month, you get access to about 100 real-time mixed media, watercolor pastel tutorials. You also get a brand new creative prompt every month and two new tutorials every month. I will link that down below if you're interested in it. And I would love to have you as a member. I'm working on pastel matte, kind of like a um, rosy beige color of pastel matte. And I'm starting off with some Derwent pastel pencils. And we're going to sketch this, um, this little uh, dessert. It seems to be like, um, it, to me, it looks like there's like a graham crackery crust and there's some bananas and some, maybe some ice cream and then maybe a marshmallow or something. It's got some chocolate drizzle and a cherry on top. And I loved the combination of color and texture. And um, I just thought, well, yeah, I, you know, I've been going through a creative dry spell. So if I find something that just like sparks my interest, I want to grab it and go with it. Um, it's kind of like trying to light a fire and you know, you get that little spark going and you just don't want it to blow out before you get a chance to, uh, uh, to create something. And so you guard that little spark and then you start, you just start drawing and you try to keep the fire alive. Uh, so that's basically what, <laughs> what I was doing here. I took the piece of foam that came with my set of pastels and laid it on the table next to me. Generally what I'll do is I'll take like a dish and put a paper towel on it. Um, the dish keeps the uh, pastels from rolling off. Um, but I had that foam insert, so I just set it down. I'm going to get ready to review this set of pastels. So I'm keeping them in their box for right now. But what I like to do is put all my pastels in pastel drawers arranged by color. I find it much more handy to use them that way because then I have all my options together because I use a variety of different brands of pastels. I like to do that because different companies sell different colors and um, they all have different uh, hardnesses. So like I like to start off with a harder pastel, then work my way to softer pastels. Then sometimes I like to kind of dig in there with like um, a really hard square pastel to kind of carve out some details. Um, you know, so I like to have all of those options together. And that's how I generally work. My, my pastel pencils aren't stored with my pastels, but um, but for the sticks, I do like to keep all the sticks together. I do keep one set of pastels in a plein air um, insert, just so if I want to go pl pl plein air painting, then I can just grab that insert and go. And that would be my Soho pastels from Jerry's Artorama. I love those things. I know people's reviews are mixed on those, but I really love that brand of pastel because I feel like I can do 95% of the painting with that pastel and just have like a handful of um, hard pastels just for details. But yeah, they're just so wonderful for plein air painting. Uh, I know not everybody loves them. I'm really surprised by that. But um, for me, they've just, they're like almost like a perfect all around consistency. But anyways, these are actually uh, quite soft. They're quite similar to the Sennelier pastels, not quite as um, as soft, these Paul Rubin ones I'm talking about, but they're good, they're they're nice. Uh, they are hand rolled pastel and um, I've tried their smaller sets and I have been, equally as um as impressed with them so it's just kind of a nice um i, I would say i want to say budget alternative the sennelier pastels though have been very affordable on amazon over the past year so you know definitely i would choose sennelier over paul rubens but um if there's a big price difference and paul rubens is a lot cheaper then i don't think you're going to go wrong with them they do include pigment information too which is nice because not all um budget friendly sets do um so yeah, I mean, I'll have a review once I've used it a little bit more. I'm working on pastel matte, which is a really kind of bougie, fancy, uh, exquisite paper. So um, I got to use it on some kind of like can't send me taunts or something just to, you know, make sure that I am evaluating the pastels for the pastels and not for the paper. I'm just uh, kind of blocking in here between the pastel pencils and the pastels. One thing I'll tell you about this, the set of Paul Rubens pastels, it really lacks rich browns. Um, most of the browns are like much lighter, kind of like beiges. And I think it's because there were more browns in their first set that came out. So they're probably expecting people to, like they probably didn't want to do overlap maybe. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Cause I did have to, at the towards the end, I did have to go grab a brown pastel from, um, from my pastel drawers. 
and these will all hopefully end up in the pastoral pastel drawers if I can fit them in um, because that's how I prefer to work. And then I have, I have a big table. Let me tell you, if you're not familiar with my studio, I have a, um, uh, like a Luan hollow core door. That's my tabletop. So it's nice and big and I can arrange my pastel trays all over my tabletop and be able to, um, just take out the pastels as I need them. And I put them on my little paper towel plate and work from there. I got a little dark on the napkin underneath. I wish I had um, not tried to just go by what was in the set because there were no really pale aqua colors. I think I would have liked it much better had I gone with a more muted color. And actually like a kind of a seafoam green would be really nice because that would be a nice opposite to that cherry rather than going with a turquoise. So, you know, that that would have been a, a wiser choice. But I, like I said, I was trying to mainly keep to that set of pastels just because I'm also just a... Uh, getting used to them so I can review them in the future. Uh, and I like to do a couple paintings before I review something just to make sure I'm not missing something or um, and make sure I'm not letting like something else I'm using with it, such as paper, uh, cloud my judgment at all. But anyway, that's just something that uh, like in hindsight, as I'm looking back, I'm like, yeah, I wish it was more of like um, a minty color than a turquoisey color. Uh, and because there isn't a lot of really dark darks in the this set of pastels, I am using some black to deepen the shadows and blending with my finger. So when you have more colors, also you don't need to blend quite so much because you'll have more ready-made colors. Um, when you have a more limited palette with pastel, you end up blending more. And sometimes that looks really nice. It can look really smooth and beautiful. Other times it loses some of it, the, the artwork's vibrancy and immediacy and punch because you are kind of smoothing everything out rather than letting the um, hand of the artist show. I think with those pastel strokes, just like brush strokes, you get to see the journey the artist has taken in the artwork. And I think that's powerful. And um, I think it adds like an energy to the artwork, even if it might not look as realistic. I think it gives you a sense of um, of urgency. You get to see how the artists worked, how quickly did they put those, how, how quickly and how surely did they put those strokes down? Um, how confident were they? You can see those things in the artwork more when it's, when there's less blending, I think. I, I don't know. I like, a, I like a combination. I love a combination of some soft and hard edges, some visible brush strokes and some blended strokes. It's, um, you know, it's definitely a balance. And, you know, depending on what kind of artwork you like to do, you may have more visible brush strokes, you may have more blends, and everybody falls somewhere. You know, they, they, that's part of your style. I think that's one of the things that really is indicative to an artist's style. Do they do they blend a lot? Do they leave the strokes raw? Um, you know, what's their aesthetic? The chocolate is really shiny. So I wanted to get some of the reflected colors in there. So that's why I put some red in the chocolate. It's just the reflection of the uh, of the cherry there. You have two shiny surfaces, you're gonna have some reflections there. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of puttering around. This, you know, with pastels, I honestly feel, I feel like it's a pretty quick medium and often I'll be like looking back at video footage of a pastel that I've done. It's like, yeah, I should have stopped here because it was, it didn't get any better after this point. I mean, I did go in and go up for some more browns for the chocolate to make it a little more richer, but it's like, you know, I could have stopped it. I could have stopped it earlier. I wanted some immediacy back, so that's why I'm going in with the background with this lighter uh, buff color just to, uh, uh, I think, give it more of a painterly look because I think my style, I do like blended edges and I do like to have some smooth parts, but I love the urgency and the look of, you know, pure brush strokes, pure pastel strokes. So it's uh, sometimes it gets a little over blended and it's like, oh, I, it, this is, doesn't look the way I want to look. It, I want to look. It doesn't look like me. I need some of that urgency in there. But um, we're all a little bit different. And uh, when you paint it, paint it however you want to. Now I'll have a link to Critique Club in the comments below in the video description if you want to check this out for yourself. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.